Hello everyone, this is Alejandro Cremades and today we're going to be talking about interesting facts and data around pitch sticks. So before we get started, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and this way you will never miss out on any of the videos that we roll out every week. So are you ready to raise capital? Pitch sticks are really the ultimate, the ultimate document that investors are going to look to review. So essentially in today's video, we're going to be talking about the different facts, the different data, what goes in successful pitch sticks, what goes in pitch sticks that fail, and perhaps you can use that data to, and, and those facts to compile better your slides and to optimize for those chances of being successful and getting that money in. So without further ado, let's get into it. So before anything, let's talk about what pitch decks are. So a pitch deck is ultimately the form of presentation that investors are going to expect in order to really review and understand your business and to consider a potential investment. Now those pitch decks, they are between 15 to 25 slides uh, in terms of length, and they are essentially slides that combine images, that combine text, and that follow a certain flow and structure like cover, problem, solution, and so forth in order for them to get what you're up to. So that's pretty much it. Now the pitch decks, typically you would put them into a Google Drive or into a Dropbox, and then essentially you grab that link and that link you share with the investors so that they can review the slides in a very easy and concise way. So there is over a thousand pitch sticks being created every day. I mean, to give you an idea, that's a crazy amount because venture capital firms, they only invest in 1,500 companies every year. So think about the amount of pitch sticks that are being created and only the small amount of companies that end up receiving an investment, a first time investment from those venture capital firms. So it's almost none. Uh, so again, really standing out, putting a compelling story, it's going to be absolutely everything to capture the attention and to move, touch and inspire with your story, these investors. So 10 slides, those are essentially what are going to determine for you to get money. So you don't need to go like the, the lengthy route, just create 10 slides. You know, you can put there the cover, the back cover, so maybe it can get you up to 15, but essentially those 10 slides where you're covering the essence of the story, you really need to nail it. The other, the other slides that you may add on top of those 10 could be to dress it up, to create a nice wrapper around the story and your packaging and positioning, but again, you need to be very clear, very concise, and have a very nice balance between the images and the text that you're adding as part of the pitch deck. In terms of font size, the best font size is 30 points. This is why you have people like Guy Kawasaki that are recommending, and again, you want to follow this direction because you want to have a nice font size here in terms of size because the investor ultimately is going to be skimming through the presentation. They're going to be reviewing super fast. So you want to allow them to go and read super fast your pitch deck and they don't have the time to go word by word like super slowly. So make it easy for them to review your document super fast. Typically, investors only spend two minutes and 41 seconds per presentation. That's it. So that's why when I say that investors are really skimming through your presentation, they actually are skimming through the presentation. So you only have two minutes and 41 seconds. That's it. That's the amount of time that is going to determine whether you are or you're not going to get that introductory meeting to be able to sit down and pitch them what you're up to. So typically investors only invest in 1% of the pitches that they receive. So to give you an idea, in venture capital firms, they probably are going to see 400 pitches and out of those 400 pitches, they would only invest in one out of those companies. That's it. So 
is a very small chance. And for that reason, not only you want to make sure that you're putting all that packaging and that pitch deck in a very powerful way, but you also need to make sure that you get a nice warm introduction that is going to push your pitch deck to get in front of the person and the decision maker so that you are getting closer to getting that money. So 100 is the number of pitches that you're going to be delivering in order to just get one single investor. That's pretty much it. So the odds are against you. It's a numbers game and you need to pitch as many investors as you can and obviously as many investors that are related to your business. Because if you're in fintech, you're not going to go and, and pitch an investor in healthcare. Uh, they have nothing to do with your space. So you need to optimize the chances. You need to optimize your time. And for that reason, you need to only go after investors that have a desire in opportunities like the one that you have. 12 weeks, that's the average amount of time that it takes to close a seed round of financing. That's it. And that's from beginning all the way to close. Now, if it's taking more than 12 weeks to really close the round of financing, then something may be fundamentally wrong, whether with your business, with your story, with what you're pitching. And that's the reason why you may want to close it up. And if you don't have the money by then, then you need to just go back to the drawing board and reflect back on what have been some of the concerns that you have been hearing from investors and perhaps tweak and redo whatever you need to do in your story so that you can perhaps go back at it again in a little bit of time. So investors spend the most amount of time on the team, on the financials, and then also on the competition. Those are the three most important slides. And according to data, the one the, the ones where the investor spends, you know, really like most of the time reviewing. So again, the team, you want to make sure that people are able to understand why they should invest in you and your team members versus investing in another team. Here, you want to make sure that you're putting front and center the capabilities, the expertise, the skill set, uh, and perhaps some of the accomplishments that you've done in the past as individuals that coming together, it makes this thing incredibly powerful. On the financials, instead of perhaps putting a screenshot from your financial model, you want to break it down, you want to add beautiful graphs, uh, please like spend the extra time, maybe the extra money, get a freelancer to help with the design so that investors can digest very easily how money is coming in, how money is coming out. That's going to come a super long way. And then on the competition, you want to create like in a, in a matrix type of thing with y-axis, x-axis, and yourself on the top right and then everyone else across the different quadrants. Uh, and essentially, don't leave anyone of your market out because then people are going to think that you're trying to hide some of those competitors. So that's why you want to put everyone out there that is competing directly or indirectly against you in a way where people can see it, can acknowledge it, and appreciate where you're at and what makes you different from everyone else. Only 58% of pitch sticks that are successful include financials. Now, this is a crazy stat because you got to remember that financials are essentially the slide or the slides that investors spend the most amount of time on reviewing. So the, the fact that only a small percentage, not 100% of them, include them, that means that if you were to just include the financials, that's going to be putting you far ahead of everyone else. And remember that as an entrepreneur, you are going after the same dollars as other entrepreneurs. Once that money is invested, that's it. That's it. Because a fund, especially a venture capital firm, is not going to be investing in competing business. So you want to be able to optimize your chances so that you can get that money quicker than potentially a, a competitor that, that also wants to pitch that same venture capital firm. So again, try to have the financials, put them in a way that they can appreciate them, that they can digest them super easily, and that's going to be giving you a nice edge when it comes to securing potentially the money. 
So 20 minutes, that's the amount of time that it should take you to deliver your presentation. So if you are being asked, asked if you are being invited to present your, your, your pitch stick, you got to allocate at least 20 minutes. So that's going to be, if you have like 20 slides, about a minute or so per slide. Uh, you, there's going to be some slides where you're going to be spending most amount of time versus others that not so much time. Again, the three most important slides, as we said, is going to be the team, is going to be the competitors, and it's also going to be the financial. So those are the three slides where you want to allocate a big chunk of those 20 minutes. Maybe you can reduce from other slides like the cover slide or the back cover slide, the thank you slide. Uh, and again, optimize for those slides where you know that there's going to be full attention when you're presenting. Between $250,000 and $5 million. That is what you should expect to receive if you're at a seed round or at a Series A round of financing. When you're going out to raise money and you're at an early stage in those two financing cycles, you should expect to fall in that range, in between. Now, obviously, there's going to be exceptions, and I've seen super big Series A rounds, but typically it goes from $250,000 when you're starting at a seed round all the way up to a $5 million round if you're at a Series A. $100,000. That could be the amount of money that each one of your slides could be worth. Because if you're putting together a pitch stick that is 20 slides, and you end up raising a seed round of $2 million, which is what the norm is right now, the average that is raised in the East Coast or on the West Coast in the U.S., that means that each one of your slides is $100,000. So that's why you want to spend the time, you want to be mindful, you want to make sure that you're putting the best foot forward, because at the end of the day, each one of those lights is going to justify the time that you're allocating on it if you're able to secure that round of financing. Between $1,500 and $50,000, that is how much a good pitch deck could cost you if you're getting a professional to help you on it. And we actually do this type of work on Panthera Advisors, so if you need help, just shoot me an email. But again, consultants and advisors are going to be charging you about that much, and I think my suggestion is that internally, you know, there's so much that you can do. Your main focus should be on the business. Obviously, fundraising is a steep learning curve, so I think that it doesn't hurt to get outside help and help you on really putting together the deck. So again, you're competing with a lot of other founders, so having access to those stats and this data is going to allow you to understand how you can optimize your time and how you can make things better. So hit a like on this video, leave a comment and let me know if you've heard of other perhaps uh, data points or data that it should be interesting to share here uh, with the community. Uh, and then also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on all the videos that we're rolling out every week. And if you're raising money, shoot me an email at alejandro at pantheraadvisors.com. I would love to help out. Thank you so much for watching.